Hey there! So it's been a month now or so since I've uh, promised a video about installing PFSense and uh, you might remember if you're a returning visitor that uh, we have even built specific hardware for it. I mean a cheap low-powered PC capable of running uh, PFSense. But uh, at this point I have to apologize. This uh, video about installing PFSense won't happen. And that's because uh, after some uh, funky problems, I decided to dish PFSense in favor of another uh, firewall software. So in this video, I will explain what was my main reason to move away from PFSense. I had it running uh, on a VM for quite some time now, and I wanted to move it to dedicated hardware, but uh, it didn't work out the way I expected. And uh, while I still think PFSense is a good piece of software, it's just not what I really needed. So if you're interested in the video, keep watching. If you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Merza and this channel deals with home automation, home networking and occasionally with stuff like DIY electronics and a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with the video. So the story is that I've been working rigorously on this whole PFSense installation stuff. I mean, I recorded carefully all the installation steps, starting right from downloading the image, then burning it to disk, then booting the selected hardware from the disk, and so on. So I was really happy and I thought, okay, with this I will be able to provide all the necessary bits of information for the average user to install PFSense in minutes. And to be honest, everything was working out nicely and uh, I couldn't wait to demonstrate all the things. But then, during the first boot, I've just noticed something. Mm, I mean, something is missing. Where's my second network interface? What's going on? It's a brand new card. It should be visible. I tested it on another machine. So. I started investigating and this is where I ended up in a, well, never-ending rabbit hole. So after some googling, it actually turned out that the network interface card I just bought for my uh, build and um, yeah, it's like a year old card, I mean, uh, it's been on the market for a year now, it turned out to be too new for uh, PFSense, for the latest version of PFSense to support. So there's been, uh, there have been bug reports and whatnot, and uh, people ask for that support, but uh, those people who have uh, already read up on uh, PFSense know that their main uh, area of interest is running with uh, Intel network uh, cards and Intel chips. So whatever that is not Intel is like, Meh, okay, we will support it eventually. And it's actually happening. So literally on the day I gave up on uh, using PFSense as my primary firewall, a merge request was uh, accepted for uh, PFSense 2.5, which is an unreleased version. And uh, that version will out of the box support uh, this new range of cards. So I should be happy, but uh, for me, actually the damage has already been done. Let me explain why. PFSense is running based on FreeBSD. FreeBSD is sort of a Unix operating system, but it's quite an old one. And by old, I'm not, I don't mean it's not maintained anymore or outdated or stuff like that. No, but uh, it's quite different from uh, the typical modern Linux operating system you are dealing with, like CentOS or Ubuntu or Red Hat. So it has its own little word, corner of the world and on community and uh, on enthusiasts and on driver support. And basically, whenever it gets to uh, driver support in PFSense, they will just point you to FreeBSD. And uh, they will say that, um, well, 
we're not supporting this or that because FreeBSD doesn't support uh, this or that. And it sounds reasonable. I mean, they just built a software on top of FreeBSD. So underlying hardware support should be done by the operating system. And um, yeah, they are technically right. But the problem is uh, the slow release cycle of PFSense. And uh, yeah, there's this thing uh, with uh, backward compatibility and stuff like that. So if you look up the supported hardware documentation of uh, FreeBSD, you will see that literally there are hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, network interface cards and chips and stuff like that supported. But if you look carefully, then uh, you will see that most of those are either old models, like uh, back from the 10 uh, megabit era, or actually uh, net, uh, enterprise grade cards, which, well, you don't have to do much. So when it comes to a new uh, card, there's a high chance that it won't be supported out of the box. And that is especially true for cards uh, based on non-Intel chips. I mentioned, uh, um, like a minute ago, the slow release cycle. And that means that uh, actual new driver updates are slow to arrive to PFSense. And it is slow, slow to the level that uh, actually PFSense has the tendency of, to run on uh, outdated or end-of-life versions of FreeBSD. So the current version is running on uh, FreeBSD 11.3, which has already reached its uh, end-of-life, and the next version, which comes out hopefully in the near future, will be based on a version of FreeBSD which will have its end of life next gen by the end of next January. So once again, an operating system that has reached an, its uh, end of life. And because of that, basically, uh, you can't really get uh, support from anybody who is involved with FreeBSD. They will just say, well, use a newer version. And this is where you uh, go to go down even deeper to the mentioned rabbit hole. So you don't have support from PFSense because they will say it's FreeBSD stuff. And FreeBSD guys will say, hey, it's already end of life, use a newer version. So you will eventually end up with uh, tutorials and stuff like that, saying you that you should build your own driver or update your driver manually, or yeah, you will end up uh, building kernel packages and whatnot, kernel modules, I mean. And this is absolutely not something you might want. So what's the conclusion here? Do I suddenly hate PFSense now or something? Obviously not. I still think PFSense is a good piece of software and it definitely has its place, but for a smart home builder like me, it's not the obvious choice anymore. And uh, that's simply because PFSense has these uh, hardware requirements that uh, might be an overkill simply for a smart home builder. I mean, for this, these uh, internet work cards which are optimized for high throughput, throughput, you don't really need those. You are not running a web service serving terabytes of data for the great public out there or something like that but you still want to have security and a stable firewall. So yeah, there are a lot of other solutions out there and that's why I gave up on PFSense. I just want to have a solution that works out of the box that I can install in minutes and gives me all the features that PFSense does. I think that is the conclusion of my adventures with uh, PFSense. I will keep an eye out, maybe it will change in the future, or maybe I will revisit it, back, revisit it at some point, but for now I will just uh, go with another piece of software and in next week's video I will show you which one. So thanks for watching this video guys, I hope it provided you some uh, useful information and um, yeah. Stay safe out there and hope to see you next week, next time, with another video. Bye! 
you're still here that's good because that means you kind of like my video if so feel free to check out these other videos too and uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing that helps me a lot and uh, yeah if you click the bell button you will get also notified about new videos